Welcome to the Zag Talk Podcast Live. My name is Guy Danhoff, and I'm here to host tonight, which is going to be a very special edition as we are going to uh, bring on two very special guests to talk about the Mark Legacy Award uh, that is given out by Shape America's Central District. And I want to bring on my guests, and let's start with Clayton Ellis. And Clayton, uh, I'm going to just briefly give a little background on you. And that, uh, from what I understand, you recently just uh, finished your term on the Shape America board. Is that correct? Yes, I did. Last week was my I rolled off the board. So moving forward to bigger and better things. And then obviously in 2010, as you can see there, you're the National High School Physical Education Teacher of the Year. Also the past president of the Colorado Governor's Council for Active and Healthy Lifestyles. And yes the past president of Shape America Central District. So welcome, Clayton, to the broadcast, as I know this is your first time. Thank you. I'm looking forward to this. And we're also joined with uh, someone that needs no introduction here in Missouri, at least. And that's uh, Dr. Tom Lowry. And Doc, it's great to have you back again. And uh, the, part of the reason why you're on here is because of an award that, that you won. And uh, so I was wondering if you could just, you know, let let everyone know, let all our viewers know what it was like being out at Shape NOLA and uh, just being part of really the, the entire convention as well as the Central District uh, Awards Night. Well, first of all, Guy, thanks for hosting this. And Clayton, I'm thrilled that you're a part of this. Really uh, makes all the connections very strong. Anything like this is humbling beyond imagination. A person does not begin their career or work in their career towards awards. Uh, I just would like to put that on the back shelf right now because I feel that we need to use this time to really honor the late Mark Harvey. Yeah. And for those of you who never saw him or never got a chance to work with him, that's too bad because Mark... I was introduced to Mark during my final year on the NASPE Board of Directors in the early 1990s when he joined the Board of Directors. Immediately, his presence was so strong and positive. He walked in the room and not like today's society, he was impeccably dressed, white shirt, tie, a suit that looked like it's right out of GQ. But it was more his personal presence, his quiet calm, and his strong demeanor. He did not come into the room to, I'm going to tell you what to do. Hmm. No, he, he was a listener first. But as he listened, he was sorting through things in his mind. You could see that happen. When he was called on for a comment or felt necessary to add his word, it was right on target. Yeah. Very, I've worked, had the privilege of working with some great leaders. And when I look back at the national and central district leaders that we've had come out of the central district, I'd look at the names, Mabel Lee out of Nebraska. I was able to have lunch with her at a national convention when she was 91 years old and as wow. vibrant as anybody could be at any age. Two of my University of Iowa, well, one, one was my doctoral advisor. The other had just retired, but we saw him on campus, Harold McCloy and Lewis Alley. Lewis was my doctoral advisor. Two of the greatest leaders in our country. And then you throw in, uh, we like to take credit for producing Helen Manley and Kathleen Kinderfather. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the, the multitude of names that raised our profession during the 20th and 21st centuries, and whose name should be on the, the Legacy Award for Integrity, you hit it right on the mark with Mark. I mean, it was fun to be with him in meetings. It was fun to sit down and listen. 
He never talked about himself, his background. He didn't need to because his actions were out there in front of everyone. And when I look at integrity, I mean, it's just the epitome of what a professional should be in any field. Mark Harvey could have been the CEO of the largest company in the United States because of how he organized, how he managed, and how he was right on target for all of the issues that we had to talk about. And yet it was also a lot of fun to watch him in a social situation. <laughs> because as Clayton is gonna mm -hmm. tell you often, he was the most elegant dancer that you could see other than uh, Fred Astaire. Wow. I mean, it was fun after our meetings. You know, professionals in our field sort of like to socialize a little bit after hours. And I can re recall one night in D.C. where I can't remember the name of the nightclub, but it was very well known and it attracted the highest clientele. And when we went in, Mark was tall, elegant, how he carried himself. And as soon as he got on the dance floor, everyone else stopped. Hmm. Everyone watched Mark dance. And every lady in the room came up and cut in with his previous partner so they would have a chance to dance with Mark. So my view is very simple. There are lots of ways that people can leave a legacy. Somebody can donate a hundred million dollars to a charitable cause and that's their legacy. A highly esteemed member of the family, it might be an aunt, it might be a grandfather, it might be a brother or sister can conduct themselves in such a way that they, that's an indelible legacy that is left for everyone. Right. And for our profession, I'm just sad that not everyone was able to not only know Mark and work with him, but also to learn from him into what style, integrity, and class are all about. So when I received this award two weeks ago, I wasn't gonna walk in in a polo shirt and a pair of shorts. I made sure that I packed a white shirt, a tie, dress slacks, and that's it. There's no way with my friends, Terry and Julie there, that I could ever emulate the appearance of Mark Harvey but I purposely wore what I did so that I can say that his legacy has lived on with my actions. A absolutely. Tom, thank you so much for that. And certainly, you know, thanks for uh, sharing that photo with us. And Clayton, I want to turn to you now. And, and if you could give us a little history of the award, because I know that this is what people see in the program, but kind of, you know, give us a little more depth to this. And I'll, I'll put this on the screen for you to get started. Okay, the uh, Dr. Mark L. Harvey Legacy Recognition Award. Dr. Mark L. Harvey enriched the lives of countless people. This award acknowledges individuals who by performance, style, humility, and wisdom have personified the personal and professional attributes of Dr. Mark L. Harvey. The recipient of the Mark L. Harvey Legacy Recognition Award demonstrates the qualities that were part of Mark's character, friend, teacher, gentleman, leader, and more. Dr. Mark Harvey was the, was the shape, it was co at the time, but he was the Colorado president in 1984, which by the way was my senior year, and I'll talk about a little bit that in college, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. But he was the central district president in 1991. He was, he was on the, the AFERD at the time, board of directors, and he was also on the National Association of Sport and Physical Education cabinet. He, one of the roles that he played that you'll hear from some of the comments that I got from other people was that he was the central district parliamentarian among other positions that he, he played with central district. Um, he was a 
a physical education professor and dance professor at Metropolitan State University in downtown Denver. Yes. And I, again, I've, I've got lots of comments from other people because I've got, he was an acquaintance of mine and I've met him a couple of times, but I, I think it's a lot better that we hear from the other people. Yeah. So with that, why don't we start with uh, right now live with, with us right now is, you know, certainly with Tom, Tom, why don't you give us a little bit about, you know, when you, you knew about the award, you went up, they announced your name and talk to us a little bit about what you had to say to everyone that was in the room now that couldn't be there, you know, obviously now. Well, legacy implies that positive contributions are going to be passed on to further the profession, to profession, to uh, embellish the life of every person. Uh, there's no way that I could ever represent the integrity of a Mark Harvey. I was able to, to be a part of his professional life. I'm hoping that my actions over these 60 years of my professional life, beginning in 1962, have had an impact on some. Not everyone pays attention, but I always told the students in my university classes that you may not always listen to what I say, but there are certain things I must say. And if this has an impact on your life, then I hope it's a positive one. And when I look at the group of Central District members there, I just was looking around and I saw many highly influential people, not only our past leaders, but our future professionals who were able to gain some inspiration, I hope, from what Mark gave to us. So every day, it is our responsibility to elevate others. And I also had one other reaction that might be a little bit negative to the younger members of our profession. If Mark Harvey was alive today, I could not see him posting a lot of photos and comments on social media. He didn't need to. By his actions and by his interactions, he was able to shine his light of wisdom so that others would see and follow. I never saw him as wanting to draw attention to himself but always to do anything in his power to uplift others and help them on a more positive professional journey. So as, as, we, as I stood there, it was very humbling to be on that list. And at the same time, I felt that I had to also pass the legacy on a little bit that this is a time for us to look inside of ourselves mm -hmm. and see what we could do to be, first of all, a better person. Because when you're a better person, you are always going to be a better professional. Yep. And so those were some of my impressions. I have great memories of the times I was able to interact with Mark. I also am sad that they didn't last longer because of what I may have been because of him. Wow. You know, Tom, I, there's just a theme. Uh, obviously you were also on when we had a chance to talk to talk about Dr. Kathleen Kinderfather. And it just seems whenever we start talking about legacy, you're talking about people that just have servant leadership hearts. I mean, that's really what you're talking about. And, uh, Oh, wow. I'm, I, I just can tell you this. I'm so fascinated by learning about, you know, Mark's history. And with that, Clayton, I know that you, you really uh, 
did a lot of heavy lifting here because you actually had a chance to get reaction from many of the past Mark Harvey Legacy Award recipients. And I was wondering if you could kind of start going through some of those with us now. Absolutely. And I'd, I'd like to reiterate some of what Tom just said, too, as far as moving forward and, and looking inside and everything, too. If, if every I had this thought this morning that if every state association and every district association, even Shape America and every affiliate organization and every exhibitor or whatever, if everybody had a Mark Harvey and they're out there, there are there are the people that are out there. We just got to get them. We got to find out who they are and, and get their influence to raise our profession at a higher level. But this award is such a big award. It's, it's the Mark L. Harvey, Dr. Mark L. Harvey Legacy right. Recognition Award. You know, it's the highest award that we give to Central District, but it's it's he was such a, a monster mentor to everybody that it's not the only award. You know, when we created the award, yeah, we got the Dr. Mark L. Harvey Legacy Recognition Award for our professionals, but we also have the Dr. Mark L. Harvey Legacy Future Professionals Award that we give out to those students that are our future in the profession, too. So, again, I did reach out to... Uh, the past award winners and and in order i'm going to go through them and everything some of them are very close friends with with mark harvey and and um uh i can't i'm apologize in advance i'm going to read their statements because they say it the best and i think with what tom was saying we'll hammer everything home yeah with, with each of these statements so there's some pretty good stories here so Put your seatbelts on, and here we go. The first award winner was in 2011, and it was uh, Kathleen Engel from Wyoming. Kathleen is a past president in a central district, and her response to my request was, wow, not sure I can pick one story. I would say that throughout our profession, Dr. Mark Harvey's name is synonymous with the word class. He was a class act. With kindness and grace, he had the wisdom to heal dissension, the passion to create the common spirit, and he radiated a genuine concern of warmth and compassion to all whom he associated. I can hear his joyous laughter when he was around his colleagues while presenting his dance sessions and in all of his leadership roles. If Mark was laughing, everyone was laughing. I can remember as a young Central District attendee, he and Kay Valentic and many other leaders in Central District were at a table having the time of their lives and laughing, almost rolling out of their chairs onto the floor in laughter. I was honored to one day sit at the laughter table. Mark Harvey made jewelry out of the Central District emblem, which became a pin that, that uh, we handed out at all the conventions. And many people over the years were gifted with that jewelry. Mark sewed all of his vests that he wore by hand himself. There are many among Central District that were fortunate to receive one of his vests after he passed. I felt like I was his daughter, and I loved dancing with him and presenting by his side. Dr. Mark Harvey was a leader to those who needed guidance, a follower to those who would seek assistance, and he was a great listener to all. He was a guiding light to this young professional and inspired me to see the vision of what our profession must do to continue its ultimate quest of providing professional opportunities for the 21st century, learners and teachers. Mostly, Mark loved people and connecting with them. And then I got another little story uh, from one of Kathleen's teachers that she hired, and, and Tim O'Hagan is a teacher in Iowa now, but he was a first-year teacher in uh, in Wyoming, and the Wyoming contingent came to Denver and uh, one of the other teachers that came with them, by the way, was Cheryl Pitts, who was a middle school teacher that actually drew a drawing of Mark Harvey that you'll see at the end of this presentation. And it, it just kind of illustrates who Mark was. But anyway, this, this group from Wyoming came to Denver for a professional development opportunity. And uh, that morning, uh, legendary Denver teacher Rocco, Rocco Carbone had a had tragically and unexpected death in his family. Mark, taking care of the Denver teachers and stuff, asked Tim if he was a certified PE teacher and drove Tim to, to Rocco's school. And uh, Tim ended up being Mark, Rocco's substitute for the day. And then at the end of the day, Mark picked up Tim and said, well, how was your, how was your day today? 
Tom, did you know Kathleen? No, I, I do not recall her at all. Okay. The second, the second award winner is uh, in 2012 was Missy Parker, or Melissa Parker. She was a professor at University of Northern Colorado. And there was a second one in 2012 as well, Dr. Scott Gorman from Kansas. These two were close friends of Mark Harvey's, and the two of them ended up, um, they created and they, and they worked with the peak, peak future professionals at our conventions and stuff. So they did uh, workshops with the future professionals. And uh, then we would do, they would pass a hat around and we actually gave out money to, to the students that came in. Missy is, is currently teaching future professionals in Limerick, Ireland. So she was one that wow. was, it was a little hard to get a hold of her little time zone difference. So I didn't hear back from from Missy, but I'm I'm sure she's loving the fact that we're recognizing Mark again. Mark's or uh, Scott Gorman's story again, 2012, and he's a professor at uh, Pitt State in Kansas. And uh, his story that I got from him was, I was just elected as the physical education and sport vice president on the Central District Board. John Zodi got us tickets to a minor league baseball game, and the Kansas group at the convention attended the minor league game that took place at the same time as the Central District Banquet. Mm. Mark caught Scott in the hallway the next morning at the convention, <laughs> and uh, Mark put it... <laughs> Mark put Major Skidmarks in my undies as he explained that my name was called to be recognized during the Central District Banquet and I was absent, which is a big no-no. Believe me, I believed him and never, ever missed anything ever again. He scared me to death. Over time, I learned that he had the biggest heart of anyone I ever knew. Scott was one of Vicki Worrell's escorts when Vicki Worrell was running for the president-elect of Aford in San Diego. Sally Shearer and I served as her escorts, and, and when she spoke at all the association caucuses, Mark introduced Vicki at the dance caucus and spoke so eloquently about her that he had folks cheering at the end. Again, he was just Mark being Mark. How about those two, Tom? Yeah. Uh, the the Kansas people, Scott uh, and Vicki and all of those, uh, these these were people in high positions in our profession, and yet they were all positively influenced by Mark's actions and his leadership. And so again, he I I still see him as a leader of leaders. And it, uh, one of the regrets that I have was that he was never our Aford president, uh, and mm. me. No one could have represented, and we've had some great representatives, but no one could have represented our profession the way that he did. Yep. So in 2013, the, the Mark L. Harvey Legacy Recognition Award went to Gay Hughes of Wyoming. Hmm. Gay had a shorter story. She's She remembers the first time that she met Mark Harvey was at a Wyoming state convention. He had traveled up to Cheyenne for their state convention. And uh, like Tom said earlier, Mark walked into the room and he hit the dance floor and didn't leave the entire night. <laughs> Gay's response was, who is that guy? <laughs> you know, so, and Gay's still active and going strong up in Wyoming. Tom? Yeah, uh, I never knew Dave that I recall, but again, it just shows how broadly Mark's influence was felt in the same way by everyone. It was, it was true, it was honest, and it was indelible. So again, uh, these, these recollections from past uh, recipients all have the common theme. Yes, they do. In 2014, Rick Pappas from Kansas was the the award winner. Rick did not know Mark Harvey personally, but uh, he had been recognized for many of his efforts nationally, regionally, and locally in Kansas. Rick has done just an amazing job as far as compiling. He's the, the archivist for Kansas and for Central District, and he actually creates these magazines that, that uh, show the history of our profession. 
And uh, so he's got all the way, you know, they had 100 years last year. I think they're doing a special convention this year. It's going to be 101 years, but it's, you know, their first president was James Naismith, the, the inventor of basketball. Wow. You know, so he's, he's got a magazine that has all that information in it. And then he just completed the Central District history as well. So his response about, about Mark Harvey was, what an amazing man. And again, Kansas, all of these people just, they're amazing leaders in our, in our district. And one uh, good thing, Clay, is that Rick provided you with a history of the Central District. And as I was looking through that and saw all the names and all the events, uh, when I worked with Rick this past summer uh, and saw that some of the material was transferred to where the archives for Central District are held, I also told him that I will provide him with a copy of Kathy Kinderfather's doctoral dissertation, mm. which was completed on the history of the Central District. And I had the original copy of that, and that along with her Luther Halsey Gulick Award we're going to keep the Luther Halsey Gulick Award in the Missouri archives, I'm sorry to say, but the history of the Central District will be kept in both. Yes, yes. And for those of the, you that don't know, the Central District archives are housed at the University of Northern Iowa, and uh, it's in a secured spot. And so for Rick to go through and document the Central District um, history, he has to actually go to to Northern Iowa University and go into like a vault and he can scan stuff and make copies, but he had to put that all together by traveling to Iowa to, to complete the history of Central District. Wow, that's pretty cool to be honest with you. And Clayton, I just want to say thank you for sharing that with us. And we might be able to put a portion of that out on the Facebook page sometime this week. So with that, uh, why don't you bring us up to 2015? Well, you'll you'll probably recognize this name in Missouri. It, 2015 Mark L. Harvey Award winner was Dennis Docheff of Missouri. <laughs> broccoli. And, uh, yep, <laughs> broccoli. He does, he does not like the broccoli, but it, as much as I try to get him to eat it, he's he's not going to fall for it. So, but I I do give him a hard time about that. So I did call and I did talk to Dennis's wife this last week and and. Uh, yeah. We're all thinking of Dennis at this time, but Dennis is, he, he typed up his response and emailed it to me. And uh, Dennis says that the first thing that comes to mind thinking of Mark is he had the biggest smile you have ever seen. Okay. Um, secondly is his affinity for his students. He was a mentor to so many people. Mark was known for wearing homemade vests with his suits <laughs> Previous Mark L. Harvey Legacy Award winners received one of his vests along with the award. Dennis received the last vest that Mark Harvey had. Each year, Dennis would wear the vest to the Central District Banquet with pride. Yeah, and we can attest to that. Uh, that was an incredible honor. And I was just thinking that Mark's vest probably could have been an overcoat for me. He was a good size. He was a good sized gentleman, and uh, at the same time, he was always about giving to others. Yes, and you know, and and when I won the award, which I'll get to in a little bit too, I just want to tell her. But all these people are they're Mark Harvey's. You mm -hmm. know, when I won the award and everything, I had I had some of these people actually offer to give me their vest. <laughs> that, that Mark Harvey had given them. So every one of these is emblematic of Dr. Mark Har L. Harvey. So here's another, here's another big name that, that uh, he didn't have a lot to say, but again, when he says something, people listen. And that is uh, former past president of Shape America, 2016 award winner, Gail Weedo from South Dakota. <laughs> Okay. Um, Mark was, Mark, his comment was, Mark was one of a kind, gracious gentleman. Hmm. Perfect. That's, yeah, that was perfect. But I got a, I got a little story about Gail too, because when I was on the, on the central district board and 
if you know, it used to be like it was mentioned with Scott Gorman, the, the president elects for AFER, they would be escorted to the different caucuses, like on the Thursday before, you know, whenever the district had their business meeting and when all the divisions had their business meetings and things like that, whoever the president elect candidates were, they traveled around with an escort to those different caucuses and they were questioned in person. And uh, so each district would have to write up like three or four questions and they would read those questions to the candidate when he arrived to their to their business meeting and everything and i was chosen to read one of the questions to gail guido when when he was running for shape america yeah. president and uh, i gotta tell you and again it was amazing it's uh i don't even remember what the question was um but when gail was running for president he came to the central district caucus and i read that question to him you know, it's something to do about his reason for running for president. And his re response was all about his his students, his the profession, his family, his kids, his grandkids, and everything else. And it was so touching that the entire room was in tears at the end of that, of that one answer to that one question. And so wow. it was amazing. Yeah. That's typical Gale as well. And that's Absolutely. why leaders emerge by their actions. Uh, a leader, a, a professional does not have their, their goals set as being recognized as the president of such and such. But the real leader looks at what can I do to elevate others? And Gail, that's his uh, persona as well as many others. Yep. He is also number one in kind, gracious gentleman. Yes, so. yes, he is. So with that, Clayton, bring us up to 2017. 2017 in, from Kansas was Joella Miroff, uh, mm -hmm. professor at Emporia State in, in Kansas. And her statement was, for those of you who are fortunate to know Mark Harvey, we saw him as the godfather of Central District. Wow. Unlike the movie version of the godfather, he was not vengeful, overzealous, or spiteful. He would never throw shade to his colleagues or threaten them. If they had deferring beliefs, instead, Mark took great care of his family, Central District family, mm -hmm. from the youngest and the least experienced to the pillars of the profession for each. Mark invested in generous member mentorship and encouragement. He led with fairness and kindness and demonstrated the highest level of competence. Mark was an advocate for all levels of physical, physical abilities. He was an inspiration through his brilliant teaching. Mark was an exceptional dancer and a beacon of humanity and remarkable human being. In addition, he gave the most wonderful hugs. <laughs> His professional family was everything to him, and we felt the same about him. Wow. And, of course, Joella has also been honored by Central District herself for her long and distinguished career at Emporia State and the people that they had surrounding them. What a high-quality faculty, and the products that they produced were some of our definitely the leaders of the, of the state of Kansas for sure. But again, these are wonderful memories, Clayton. It really takes us back to those connections. Yeah. And, and, and Clayton, I just want to just say thank you so much for putting in again, all this legwork. And again, it's just is so wonderful to have this archive, uh, you know, basically video media that we have put together tonight that we can keep for, you know, for quite some time. So people can really learn more about the legends of the game, the people that have been game changers that have paved the way for so many of us. So with that, let's bring us up now to 2018. Well, this, we're still at 2017. We had two in 2017 and this one is, is a game changer and a monster from the, from the state of North Dakota. He's a, he's a past president of shape America. He was, he and Gail were the were the two presidents at the time that kind of led Aford into the unification and through the unification process at uh, Shape America. And it's uh, Brad Strand from North Dakota. And 
Brad was one that I couldn't get a hold of, but that's probably because he's he's busy being the Mark Harvey of North Dakota. <laughs> I re, I remember when I was when I was going for the Teacher of the Year and and things like that. I was in my office just looking at the books. I'm like, hey, there's there's a book by Dr. Brad Strand, and so we've all used. He's written numerous leadership papers and numerous books that that the physical educators use across the country. Yeah. And definitely a consummate professional leader in every way and highly respected everything he did. The greatest memory I have of Brad was uh, in 2010 when Beth Kirkpatrick uh, had her uh, global forum on physical education for the for 2020. Brad and I were able to share a bus ride between Grundy Center and Cedar Falls uh, for the University of Northern Iowa and went back and forth. And it was just like we had many common friends. We had uh, many things, and you could see that his heart was gold. And uh, every one of these people, it was not about them. It was about right. what they could do for others. And Brad has certainly mentored uh, hundreds of people through his program. And an absolute expert on leadership. I had the great opportunity to present with him at, at the Sally Shearer Summit um, a couple of years ago in Sioux Falls, where I just kind of moderated his presentation, and he just led everybody on what their what their job was going to be in the next year as they took on their leadership roles. It was wow. awesome. Yeah. All right, 2018. 2018. We we had two more. Um, award winners in 2018. We were in Sioux Falls, South Dakota for our uh, winter conference in, at the Sanford Pentagon in uh, Sioux Falls in January. So it was a little bit cold outside, but it was it was still a great convention. Um, 2018, Megan DeMoss, also from Kansas. Her statement is, Mark was a gentleman and a scholar, always impeccably dressed and added a touch of class to us PE people. He loved to graciously dance the night away. One of my favorite memories was attempting to get as many people on a bed in a hotel room. Classy Mark was right in there with us, just a class act, and I'm blessed to have known him. Wow. Yeah. She's a past president of Central District as well in, in Kansas. Um, this next one is probably gonna be a little tough for me. <laughs> 2018 from Wyoming, um, Nancy uh, Russell Eklund. <laughs> Obviously a Mark Harvey award winner. And this is something from me. Nancy called me in May a couple of years ago and asked if I would mm -hmm. send her a copy of my resume because she wanted to share it with the future professionals in Wyoming. She was, she said she was collecting those resumes to show what a resume looked like for the, the professionals in physical education. And then uh, what Nancy did with that resume is Nancy completely filled out the Mark Harvey Legacy Award application form and got a couple of our other friends, Jennifer Reeves and, and Joanne Owens Nausler, to write letters of recommendation for me. Nancy called me on a Monday the last week of August two years ago to let me know what she had done. She had suddenly and very tragically passed away at the end of that week. So I was obviously very upset about that and, and very surprised that she had filled out the entire application and she emailed it in for me. Nancy mailed thank you cards to the Central District Executive Committee members that Friday to thank them for their service to Central District. And again, she passed away on that Saturday night and the executive committee received their thank you cards on the next Monday. Wow. Wow. And you, you just have to put an exclamation mark on that one because uh, within the central district, when it was time to have an executive director for the central district, it was a shoe aid. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, everyone got along well with her. She had a vision. She was able to help people develop what needed to be done in their own states. And I can recall that that same uh, Sanford uh, or one of the one of the meetings in the Sanford uh, Center in Sioux Falls, 
it was just one or two months into Stephanie Morris's accepting the position as CEO of Shape America. And Nancy asked if I would be the, the companion for Stephanie for lunch. Wow. She felt that we needed to have some things to talk about. Uh, so I could never thank Nancy enough for giving me that opportunity to know Stephanie as we did and then as it continues. But Nancy was one of a kind. Absolutely. Nancy, you know, Wyoming's association is not not as big as some of the other states and everything. And the Green River, Wyoming is all the way in the southwest corner of Wyoming. And then she was, you know, she was on the governor's council for Wyoming at the same time that I was on the governor's council for Colorado. So we collaborated quite a bit as far as those things. Some of the things that she did in Wyoming were just absolutely amazing. But when we had like meetings in the Denver area for like fuel up to place 60 or some of those other organizations that we were partnered with, um, she would come to Denver and naturally call me and she would usually call me at least once a week anyway and everything. And then she does have her son is here in the Denver area with, kids and so she would come to uh babysit uh her grandkids and things like that but she would she would always make it a point to try and get away for a little bit and call me and we'd have a little mini central district meeting <laughs> at uh at some restaurant here in the denver area and, and uh her drink of choice was it was a margarita and uh, a lot of times she would get there before me and I would walk into the restaurant and there'd be a margarita waiting for me and uh, <laughs> and it was just unbelievable to meet with her as often as I did. And, and what a great opportunity to work with her. Wow. And you know, yeah. Clay, as you were describing that, it is some of us are so fortunate to have had these experiences with people like this. It's, it's caused me to want to be more like them and bring others into the mm. world and to do to use their actions and their vision to impact others because a legacy means that you start with a point and it grows and it grows and it grows. And that's because of the interactions we have with others, the opportunities we have to share the same principles. Uh, if we can do that, our country will be better. Our profession will be better. We will be better. Absolutely. And, you know, and it's that professionalism and piece as well and, and holding a high standard for the people that she was mentoring and that Mark mentored as well and everything. So in, this other one was, was is just another Mark Harvey to me. And it's from uh, the state of South Dakota in 2019. Um, one of the most amazing central district executive directors that we had and uh, created a leadership summit. And then later in our my term with Central District, we voted to name the Leadership Summit in her honor. Um, Sally Shearer was the 2019 yeah. Mark Harvey Award winner. Um, and her story nails it too. She says, my, my Mark Harvey story is more of a story to the man's character. Hmm. The thing about Mark was the way that he handled being parliamentarian for Central District. He served in that role when I was president he duly understood the rules of order, showing that he did his homework for for his position. And then he, as he sat on the board, not once did he interject his personal opinions. He simply kept us in line with the rules of order. I have never known another person who served in this role who executed it so well. But that is Mark, a person of excellence, no matter what his role, what role he chose, he chose to do it right. And that is my story. And, you know, and, and Sally was one of those on the board too. She, she kept us in line and on task and everything like that when we were in central district board meetings, you know, we had so many of them too. Scott Gorman was a parliamentarian. John Zodi was a parliamentarian and they just, they kept our meetings right on task. No question. Sally continues to lead through the uh, summit. And uh, again, this is a passion that never dies. 
uh, once, once you believe in what you're doing, uh, you want to share it with others and help them achieve the same results. So Sally is a true leader. Absolutely. And, you know, and she, she said too, that it was, you know, it wasn't about, you go to, you go to some of the leadership workshops and things like that, and people just talk at you. Right. And, uh, so they created the, originally with the president elects, they created the leadership summit so that the leaders, they could work with those leaders to develop their, whatever their vision or mission was for their presidential year and, and give them an opportunity to work on that and then learn from the other people that were there from the other states. And so this is the 18th year for the Sally Shear Leadership Summit this summer in Grand Junction, Colorado. And what it is, is it's we bring together the executive directors and the president elects from our nine central district states, and they get to, to share their stories and share what they are working on and then try to work together to build our profession within the, the heart of the country, as we call it central district. We're the heart. Hmm. All right, so now we're up to 2020, and uh, what makes this one kind of interesting now, now you're getting into the COVID era, so let's uh, <laughs> see what happens with 2020. Well, again, as I, as I said, um, in two years ago in 2018, um, somebody went ahead and asked for a resume and filled out the application and turned it in, and I was, happened to be the recognition chair where I was giving out the awards and uh but 2020 is clayton ellis from colorado so i'm so honored to be a part of this and and i i have uh made the acquaintance of of mark harvey on a couple of occasions and so i wrote up a quick little thing too the first time that i mark, met mark was my senior year of college and my professor dr jack cotton um told me that i was going to go to the the Kawayford convention in Denver with him and attend uh, sessions. And what we did back then was the, the students, the, the future professionals back then served as presiders over sessions. And as a presider, I was required to make sure that the presenters had everything they needed for their pre presentation. We helped them set up their presentation room. And then we, you know, introduced the presenter to the, to the room as they presented and then we would break down the session and get it ready for the next speaker so that was my first interaction with mark and i i noticed that he just engaged everybody at the convention um, everybody everybody that was in the room came in contact with them mark would and then when i went to national conventions and even central district conventions Mark would give the convocation at those at those sessions, so he would be the first speaker up on the stage. And I was at a national convention one time, and I was by myself. And I was the only one from my school and the only one from my district that was there. And being alone, I was just kind of standing in the back of the room. Well, Mark gave the convocation to that that general session at the national convention. And when he got off the stage, it looked like the president of the United States trying to leave the State of the Union down the center aisle. And everything. Everybody was reaching out to him, trying to shake his hand and and engage with him as he as he walked to the back. And then he walked to the back of the room and actually stood next to me, and we we shared small talk for a while and everything back and forth during the general session. He uh, that's where I kind of got the message. The message from Mark was, you know, I see you sitting up front, <laughs> you know, and everything. So and ever since then. You know, I've, I've pretty much sat at the front at all those general sessions after after meeting him and talking to him. Um, Mark passed away the week that, of the Kuwaiford Convention in 2009, and Kuwaiford had a or Colorado had a blizzard in Colorado Springs, and a lot of our a lot of our members were unable to make the convention. But he passed away. I think it was on that Monday, and then we had the the convention on Friday and Saturday, and there were a lot of people that actually chartered a bus so that they could go to his memorial um, in Colorado. Uh, and again, it was a, it was a pretty bad storm that we our, our membership, only about half the registrants were able to actually make it to the hotel because of the snow. So he passed away at the beginning of that. And then I took over as the president after that convention. And so one of the things that we did in Colorado was 
we created the Mark Mark L. Harvey Boom Boom Shakedown Social. So the Colorado <laughs> Social is named also in honor of Mark Harvey. And then, so so when I was giving out um, the awards, the Teacher of the Year awards and things like that to uh, the, the award winners in Colorado, we had a brand new hotel that we were in. It was an embassy suite. And so they had a great big ballroom that we were in where we had the dinner tables all set up and everybody sitting at the tables. And, and after we gave out the awards, I had the, the hotel staff came into the back of the room and you, they just kind of snuck into the back of the, this ballroom that we were at. And on the other side of that wall was the DJ with the, with the dance floor on the back side. So the hotel staff actually came in and they flew the wall. So it just opened up our whole area. And, and then the DJ hit the music and everything. And, and we started dancing the rest of the night away at, at my state convention. Um, and then the first dance was, was Terry Todd with uh mary harvey and they danced the polka as the first dance to our, <laughs> our mark l harvey boom boom shakedown social <laughs> Clayton, i appreciate that see here's the thing i love all this history i am a history buff which is why i love doing these documentary style you know uh media communication so keep the stories coming and and thank you for all those insights so were you the only one then that won in 2020 yes i was and then and that was and again that was covid so it was a it was kind of a virtual uh presentation that we did and then in 2021 was also a virtual presentation and uh it went to minnesota's sue tar um i think sue did not really know mark harvey at all but she knew of him right and uh sue as every many people know is with all the other great minnesota people rich burke and and uh those those individuals, um, Nancy Christensen was the executive director for Minnesota for so long. They're all Mark Harvey Award winners. They should be, and everything. So Sue is the absolute leader in the adapted physical education genre up in Minnesota, and so she's got lots of lots of uh, adapted teachers that she's mentored across the country. Absolutely, and uh, Clayton, why don't you read this? So we got a we got a comment that just came in. And this is from Missouri's uh, very own Chris Staley. And uh, what does he have to say? Chris says, thank you for sharing some awesome stories, fellas. Tom and Clayton have, have done so much for me as, as well as many HPE community members from all over the country. And thank you, Chris. Really appreciate that. Hashtag mules. Yeah, he's, he's a real up-and-comer. And we've got high hopes for great success. Absolutely. And then also, Tom, this was thrown your way from Bob Knipe, uh, a passion that never dies. Well, thank uh, you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to, to Becca. And I had a great conversation with your mother-in-law. Uh, and uh, we had a great time in New Orleans. I met Bob for the first time in Grundy Center when he was one of the Polar Scholars uh, with uh, with Beth and yeah. that, that group up there. And Beth took me aside and said, this guy, you're going to hear a lot from him. And we are, and we continue to. So, Bob, nothing but the great things ahead. Let's, uh, just as Dolly was uh, president of the national organization, we know that you have the, the uh, background and at some point, you will do that. You're already influencing people. So thanks for the comment, Bob, and hello to everybody. For sure. And, you know, another thing, too, is like I said at the beginning, too, is these th there's all kinds of Mark Harveys. And if every organization, every state, and every district had their Mark Harveys out there and being active, and then we can definitely change the culture, you know, throughout the country as far as physical education goes. And you got Bob and Chris that are on the on the call here that are a couple of those that are going to make some big progress in the future. And uh, Clayton, I just have to follow that up because uh, to me, we cannot end this without sharing our own responsibilities for being Absolutely. the best person we can ever be, elevating everybody that we work with and making sure that every state has leaders 
Obviously they do. Some have more than others, but focus. Uh, this is one of the things that Guy and I talk about a lot. You have to connect the present with the past. You have to connect the past with the present. What can we learn? What can we do? Who, who has influenced us? And what will it take for us to influence others? So that comment was right on target with it. Thank you. Thank you for uh, mentioning that. Absolutely. And it's, you know, it's, it, as far as advocacy, you know, it's, it's, you just can't sit back and watch these initiatives and things like right. that go by. It's, it's a matter of, of hashtag do something, you know, that, that's going to build up the, the program instead of sitting back and watching. And so we do have some great people out there that are doing a good thing. I do have a, a few more comments from some others um, that I'll share if you're ready, Guy. I'm ready. This fired fired up and ready to go. Okay, this one's a, this one's another big one. She's past president of everything in the world. Um, Dr. Joanne Owens Nausler, uh, past president of Aford and Central District, and like I said, everything else. And what a great dynamic speaker that she is when she travels around the country and an advocate for. Her our profession. So here's her comment. Mark Harvey was a brilliant, caring, kind, compassionate, fun, and funny to mention a few qualities. One of my funny memories was the White Castle visit. I had never been to a White Castle or even <laughs> knew of White Castle. So Mark ordered half dozen burgers for me. I was shocked. He just giggled at me as I tried to reason with him not to get him a half dozen, get me a half dozen burgers. He got me even a bigger giggle when the silver dollar size burgers arrived and my anxiety level was lowered. <laughs> <laughs> the second fond memory was when he was a candidate for the Aford president. Mark was not chosen on that day. In his humble speech after the result, he said, I am wounded, but I am not slain. Mm. I have thought of his grace and humility often and wonder how much better our lives could be if we all tried to embody the qualities of grace, humility, compassion, and commitment. I guarantee I was blessed to strengthen my abilities in those qualities because of my personal and professional friendship with the late Mark Harvey. Just what we were just talking about. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the next one is John Zodi, close personal friend, past president of, of uh, Central District and on the AFERT Board of Directors. He was also a parliamentarian for Central District. And uh, his story is, before I was elected to Central District president, Mark had announced that he was stepping down as parliamentarian. When I was elected, I asked Mark if he would hang around until the end of my term. He said, Jody, he always called me that because I think he thought my first name was Jody, since everyone called me Zodi, if it was anyone else but you, I declined the invitation. I felt extremely honored that he agreed to continue as parliamentarian. Mark always had a way to make people feel that they were important. I have one of his handmade vests in my closet, and every time I open it, I see and think of what a remarkable man he was. Hmm. We were talking about titles for session proposals for conventions and conferences one time. And he told me that one of his first presentations was called, You Can't Steal Hubcaps While You're Dancing. <laughs> <laughs> then he told the story about how when Mark was growing up, Mark grew up very poor in Chicago. He would go into a restaurant and order water with lemons because it was free. He would use the sugar packets that were also free on the table and, and make lemonade out of the lemon water. Hmm. He would also put ketchup on the free soup crackers and eat those for his meal. Hmm. That was Dr. Joe and John Zodi. Patricia Morrison was a longtime Quaifert executive director. She was a past adapted teacher of the year. She was past president um, of Shape Colorado or Quaifert at the time. And her, her short remark is uh, Mark always wore a homemade vest that he himself made two central district events. No matter what city the Aford or central district convention was in, Mark went to church with many, many PE teachers would go with him as they knew that he would have a church within walking distance. 
of the convention. He had high standards and held everyone accountable. Wow. And so, Clayton, what I'd like to do now is I'm going to actually finally show an image of Dr. Harvey. And I was wondering if you could specifically speak to the to the painting and then read uh, the very last um, reaction. And that's how we're actually going to wrap up the broadcast. And with that, let me pull up the image uh, for us. Yeah, and then you can him. give then you can give us the story behind uh, what we're going to see with with the painting. OK, again, well, the picture on the left is just a, it's a picture from his memorial where somebody just snapped a picture. And, and that's the best picture that they that they had of Mark at the time. The picture on the right is was a I believe she was a middle school physical education teacher in Wyoming that worked for Kathleen Engel and just all the different roles that Mark Harvey played throughout the country. And she drew this this picture of Mark and it was Cheryl Pitts from Wyoming, middle school teacher that drew this up. And it was we shared it in our in our Shape Colorado program and we put it in in uh, you know, it's, I, I get different versions of it from different people when I ask for these responses. And this is probably the best one that I could get. But this was like the back of a Shape Colorado um, program for our convention. And the last statement that, that I've got is from one of Mark's very best friends and colleagues at Metro State. And, and uh, he's a past president of, of Kuwaiford. He's a past president of Central District. And they were just the best of friends. And this is... This is Terry Todd's eulogy that he read at Mark Harvey's memorial. Who was Mark Harvey? Husband, father, grandfather. And to those who knew him, teacher, mentor, colleague, and friend. Mark was the ultimate professional in Aford. He served the profession in just about every every way possible. He was president of Kuwaiford and president of Central District. He served on the Aford Board of Governors and on the NASPY cabinet. To those that, that knew him, he will be deeply missed. To those who were not fortunate to have that pleasure, I would challenge you to work as hard in this profession as he did. Mark was a great teacher, but he really loved to dance. He felt that most things in life were expressed through dance. I remember one particular Colorado convention in Aurora when there was a, was a dance in the evening and my wife, Nancy, myself, Mark, and a few other women were still around when the DJ finished for the night. His comments, we will have to thank Kuwaiford for our private dance party. In memory of Mark Harvey, Dr. Mark Harvey, please join me in a toast to our own gentle giant of a friend. We will miss you, our friend, and we'll try our best to follow your lead and honor our family and our friends and our profession. I know that tonight the music is playing and you are not only dancing, but leading a line dance. In your memory, we will smile to brighten the day of everyone we meet. We will laugh and enjoy life more. We will dance because you taught us how. And to all of you from Mark, I hope you dance. 